you're not longer yourself. You have this important role from the people. So that's the main feeling that is, uh, in a way, overwhelming. And uh, also all those rules about, some of them are written and some of them are, don't, are not. So you have to read about them and then you have to ask mm -hmm. how do you approach other people and how do you begin your speeches and, and how do you do things. And is it hard to learn those rules? Uh, so, some of it is, uh, you know, they, they give sort of a, a course yeah. so for new parliamentarians uh, about those formal rules, you, you know, how do you address the speaker and how do you address the uh, ministers and, and the other parliamentarians and so on. Mm -hmm. But then uh, those unwritten rules, uh, for example, you know, the, the first a speech you give is called uh, the virgin speech. I don't know how you say it in English. But, yeah. So it's the first speech and then it is an unwritten rule that nobody asks you questions on this first speech because it's a kind of um, you, you, sh you should be untouched through this first speech. Mm -hmm. But that is something that is occasionally being broken because somebody decides to ask you a question and then the uh, experienced parliamentarians send you their eye. Oh, you know? like, uh, no, you're not supposed to do this. Yeah. yeah. So there are many rules on how to behave in this space and, um, and it's sort of creating a frame mm -hmm. for this institution, Alþingi. Do you think this space and the building from 1881 here, that it's um, a good frame for democracy? It, it creates a very important part of the atmosphere because you know that uh, important parts of the Icelandic history has actually happened in there. So you feel partly as a, uh, uh, a segment in the Icelandic democratic history that's uh, in, in a way so I think it is uh, important this uh, uh, atmosphere you know mm -hmm. this is you have the feeling that you are writing a small chapter in the story of Iceland yeah yeah when you're inside the yes. space yes. yeah <clears throat> and also all those heavy pictures on the walls, you know, of mostly men who yeah. did important things <laughs> during their history. You know? yeah. So that's, that's also a part of uh, how this atmosphere is created. And it's sort of a space from a period of time, and we are still using this space. And you say like the pictures of, of the male characters mm. on the walls. Don't you think that there's some kind of necessity to evolve in a way or do you feel like we should stay in, in this inside this space i think it's very important to evolve in a way i think it's uh, it's always delicate you know when you're part of history and you want also be to be part um balance it's a difficult balance uh, for example as uh, my parliamentarian group of former left green we uh, uh, we now are 10 parliamentarians but we were seven mm -hmm. and when we were seven we had this uh, rather small room in the parliament building that is uh, long narrow and yellow right. and uh, we sat there in a very was a very nice space and it suited us very well and we liked it a lot but then when we became 10 we had to move it was too small it was too small we had to move into another uh, room and our room is traditionally the room of the, uh, of the, what would you call it, farmer's party or something, like a party in the middle, mm -hmm. the Framsorgnaflokkur. Ah, oh, okay. And that is a green room, and it is more like, uh, uh, yeah, rectangular. Like and
and uh, they had old and very uh, very formal paintings on the wall painted by the classic Icelandic male painters you know mountains and so on mm -hmm. and one of the first things I did was to con contact the uh, Icelandic art gallery uh, because they they take care of the art in the building mm -hmm. and ask them for uh, abstract paintings made uh, painted by women because that's part of yeah, creating and, and making it your own yeah in a way yeah so I mean we have the old walls and the old windows and the old atmosphere in a way but you have to be part of creating it exactly. and put it forward yeah. into yeah. as a <coughs> member of parliament yes but, uh, yes regarding the paintings on the wall and the so paintings. on so that's something you can create for yourself I would think that the main change is, is the change of, of uh, mixed gender space because it uh, it makes the communication different and also the uh, the the rules of, or or really the law of how how you speak how long you can how long your speeches can be and so on they have been changed mm -hmm. they were changed like 10 years ago or something like that before that you could uh, make endless speeches you could just take your books with you and speak for seven hours. Okay. And that got changed and cut down to 15 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then everything changed. Yeah. You know, the speeches got more compact <coughs> and uh, the atmosphere changed also. And then when you get younger people in there, uh, or not as much... Uh, into etiquettes and rules, then it's a, it's a kind of an interesting mismatch mm -hmm. going on, you mm -hmm. know, the kind of a press mm -hmm. arrow and, and uh, you know, uh, with all this history and, and culture in it. I think it's charming in a way, but you have to, uh, have to uh, adapt to the same situations as your pre-parliamentarians. Uh, found any better way. Rigid? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Um, but back in the old days, the, the uh, General Assembly Hall was for the general uh, uh, Althing business. Yeah. Yes. I think it's a very important question, but uh, 